Even our famous rain couldn't put people off cinema going. Look at the queues for the La Scala in 1936. <laughs> Welcome to our wander through Glasgow's picture palaces, brought to you by Glasgow Museums, City Archives, Special Collections and other amazing archives. In the 1930s and 40s, Glasgow had more cinemas per person than any city outside America, earning it the name Cinema City. There were over 130 cinemas in Glasgow, but what does Cinema City look like today? Are picture palaces a thing of the past? Visiting the cinema was more than just going to see a film. It was about luxury and glimpsing glamour. Imagine passing through the doors of the Paramount beneath its towering lights and buzzing neon sign. Your ticket granted entry to a picture palace where the staff were on show and your every sense was awakened. Doormen and ushers would welcome you past polished doors up to the cafe, restaurant or the auditorium itself. Choosing which cinema to go to can't have been easy, as these 1945 entertainment listings from the Evening Times show, the choice was vast. So many cinemas with such appealing names, Arcadia, Mecca, Vogue, Regal. There was something unique about the cinemas in their name and their character. This magazine of the Toledo from 1939 contained news from the manager and shows the Spanish-American influence on the cinema's hacienda-style window. Another unusual cinema was the Orient, which opened in 1932. It must have been quite a sight in Glasgow's East End, with its Mesopotamia-inspired tower and exotic motifs. The Orient closed in 1965, but reopened after as a bingo venue. The artist Andrew Hay went to the Orient as a child in the 1950s, captured here in his painting Gallagate Noir. He has never forgotten the atmospheric interior and the excitement it added to the film screenings. Even our famous rain couldn't put people off cinema going. Look at the queues for the La Scala in 1936. The Chromosol Company of Glasgow used to make manual pumps and disinfectant solutions used by ushers to keep cinemas hygienic. A full house might generate quite an aroma without Chromosol's help. The pump air fresheners were nicknamed Scooshers and were available in pine, lavender and rose scents. Cinema goers even said to ushers, Scoosh me miss! When youngsters weren't too busy taking orders for fish suppers from people waiting to get into the cinema, They'd be queuing themselves to get into their own children's matinees, like this one at the Odeon. In the 1930s, it's said folk could get into the cinema by bringing along an empty Geely jar. But how would the cashier have stored them all in the ticket booth? Others say you'd get a penny for the jar at the shop next door and then use that to buy your ticket. Chances are the shop next door would be Burroughs or R.S. McCall's. This kiosk at the Westway was run by Burroughs, who stocked treats and tobacco to enjoy inside the cinema. This view of the Westway shows a sweet shop next to the entrance. In 1950 the Westway was bought by George Singleton, one of Glasgow's most successful cinema owners, who became known as Mr Cosmo. And the jewel of the Singleton cinema crown, the Cosmo. The Cosmo opened in 1939 as Scotland's first cinema for art house and world film. Perhaps in celebration of this focus, the Cosmo sign changed in the 1960s to have two globes within the name. The Cosmo became the Glasgow Film Theatre in 1974 and continues to be one of the country's most successful art house cinemas, not to mention organisers of the popular Glasgow Film Festival. Round the corner on Renfield Street, another great cinema owner, George Green, opened his picture palace in 1927, Green's Playhouse. This was Mr Green's fifth cinema in Glasgow, and it was his biggest. It was once the largest cinema in Europe. As well as a vast auditorium, it included a rooftop ballroom, tea rooms, restaurants and a putting range. Green's was demolished in 1987, 
But in 2001, from the exact same site, emerged the towering UGC, now Cineworld, a Guinness world record holder as the tallest cinema in the world. At one time in Glasgow's city centre, there were 23 cinemas. Today there's just a few. But these actually provide more cinema screens than in Glasgow's golden era, totalling 24. Once the St Enoch Centre opens the view, the city's newest nine-screen multiplex, that total will become 33. Add to that the annual Glasgow Film Festival, now in its 16th year, and it seems only fair to declare that Glasgow remains a genuine cinema city.